Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Sharif abdel -Kadus. Well, the Obama administration has given BP the go-ahead to keep its ruptured well sealed for another day, despite worries about the well leaking some oil and methane gas. National Incident Commander Thad Allen said the seep was not cause for alarm. Meanwhile, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, has released its analysis of BP's data on the exposure of cleanup workers to the chemical dispersants being used in the Gulf. OSHA, T OSHA Chief David Michaels told the environmental website Greenwire that, quote, I think you can say exposures are low for workers. Exposures of workers onshore are virtually non-existent. There are significant exposures near the source, and that's to be expected given the work being done there. Those workers are given respiratory protection, he said. But with BP having poured nearly 2 million gallons of the dispersant known as Corexit into the Gulf, many lawmakers and advocacy groups say the Obama administration is not being candid about the lethal effects of dispersants. At a Senate subcommittee hearing last week, Maryland Democrat Barbara Mikulski grilled administrators from the EPA about Corexit and said she didn't want dispersants to be the Agent Orange of this oil spill. I'm concerned because I feel, and I believe, and my reading verifies that we don't know enough about the impact of dispersants and dispersed oil when people, marine life, and water quality. I'm very concerned, and my question is, should we ban them? Should we take a time out from using them? What are the short and long-term consequences of using them? I don't want dispersants to be the agent orange of this oil spill. And I want to be assured in behalf of the American people that this is okay to use and okay to use in the amounts that we're talking about. Maryland Senator Barbara Mikulski. While concerns over the impact of chemical dispersants continue to grow, Gulf Coast residents are outraged by a recent announcement that the $20 billion government-administered claim fund will subtract money cleanup workers earn by working for the cleanup effort from any future claims. Fund Administrator Kenneth Feinberg says the ruling will apply to anyone who participates in the Vessels of Opportunity program, which has employed hundreds of Gulf Coast residents left out of work because of the spill. It's uh, seen as an effort effort to limit the number of lawsuits against BP. We're joined by two guests on these two issues, on Corexit and the workers. Um, independent journalist R. Jamal is joining us from Tampa, Florida. He's been reporting from the Gulf Coast for three weeks. His latest article, Truth Out, is called BP's Scheme to Swindle the Small People. And from Washington, D.C., we're joined by Hugh Kaufman, a senior policy analyst at the EPA's Office of Solid Waste and Emergency Response. He's been a leading critic of the decision to use Corexit. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Let's begin with Hugh Kaufman. First of all, explain what Corexit is, the company that makes it, what's in it, and your concerns. Well, uh, Corexit is one of a number of dispersants uh, that are toxic, that are used to atomize uh, the oil uh, and force it down the water column uh, so that it's invisible to the eye. Uh, in this case, these dispersants were used in massive quantities, almost 2 million gallons so far, uh, to hide the magnitude of the spill and save BP money. Uh, and the government, both EPA, NOAA, et cetera, have been sock puppets for BP in this cover-up. Now, by hiding the uh, amount of spill, uh, BP is saving hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in fines. And so from day one, there was tremendous economic incentive to use these dispersants to, to hide uh, the magnitude of the uh, gusher that's been going on for almost three months. Uh, Congressman uh, Markey and Nadler, as well as Senator Mikulski, have been heroes in this respect. Uh, Congressman Markey made uh, the uh, uh, BP and government put a camera down there to show the public the gusher. And when they did that, experts saw that the amount of, of uh, material, oil, being released is orders of magnitudes greater than what BP and NOAA and EPA were saying. And the cover-up started to evaporate. But the use of dispersants has not. Consequently, we have people, wildlife, we have dolphins that 
are hemorrhaging, uh, people who work near it uh, are hemorrhaging uh, internally, and that's what dispersants are supposed to do. EPA now is taking the position that they really don't know how dangerous it is, even though if you read the label, it tells you how dangerous it is. And, uh, for example, in the Exxon Valdez case, people who work with dispersants, uh, most of them are dead now. The average death age is around 50. Uh, it's very dangerous, and it's an economic, it's an economic uh, protector of BP, not an environmental protector uh, of, of the public. Now, the one thing that I did want to mention to you, Amy, that's occurred in most investigations, back even in the Watergate days, people said, follow the money. And that's correct. Uh, in this case, you've got to follow the money. Who saves money by using these toxic dispersants? Well, it's BP. But then the next question, I've only seen one article that describes it, who owns BP? And uh, I think uh, when you look and see who owns BP, you find that it's uh, the majority ownership, a billion shares, is a company called BlackRock that was created, owned, and run by a gentleman named Larry Fink. And uh, the uh, uh, Vanity Fair just did recently an article about Mr. Fink and his connections with Mr. Geithner, uh, Mr. Summers, and others in the administration. So I think what, what's needed, we now know that there's a cover-up. Dispersants are being used. Uh, Congress, at least three Congress folks, Congressman Markey, Congressman Nadler, and uh, Senator Mikulski are on the case. And I think the media now has to follow the money, just as they did in Watergate, and tell the American people who's getting money for poisoning the millions of people in the Gulf. We're talking to Hugh Kaufman, who works at the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, this is an issue we've brought up before, but it's an absolutely critical one. The issue of proprietary information of these companies, in particular the ingredients of Corexit, even the 1.8 um, million uh, pounds of it have been dumped into the Gulf. What's in Corexit? Do you know? What is EPA allowed to know, and what is the company allowed to keep private? EPA has all the information on what uh, in, uh, the ingredients are. The largest ingredient in Corexit is oil. Uh, but there are other materials, and when the, the ingredients are mixed with, uh, uh, with oil, uh, the combination of uh, uh, Corexit or any dispersant and oil is more toxic than the oil itself. Uh, but EPA has all that information. That's a red herring issue being raised, that we have to somehow know more information when you look at the label and you look at the uh, toxicity sheets that come with it, the public knows enough to know that it's very dangerous. Uh, the National Academy of Science has done work on it. Toxicologists from Exxon that developed it have published on it. So we know enough to know that it's very dangerous. And to, uh, to say that we just have to know more about it is a red herring issue. We know plenty. It's very dangerous. Uh, and, in fact, uh, Congressman Nadler uh, and um, Senator Lautenberg are working on legislation uh, to ban it. And I should correct myself, 1.8 million gallons, I think it is, of corrects that that's been done, Tree. And that's Hugh correct. Kaufman. Almost 2 million gallons of... Yes, sir. So the... Um... I'm sorry, I'm not... No, no, go ahead. The, 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 the dispersant you, is... Uh, th these nearly 2 million gallons have been dispersed not only on the surface of the water, but also 5,000 feet below the water as well. Can you talk about that? Well, not only do you have airplanes flying and dropping them uh, on uh, the Gulf uh, region like Agent Orange in Vietnam, but a large amount of it is being uh, shot into uh, uh, the water column at, at uh, 5,000 feet to disperse the oil as it gushers out. Uh, and so you have spread, according to the Associated Press, over perhaps 44,000 square miles uh, on oil and dispersant mix. And what's happened is that makes it impossible to, to skim the oil out of the water. Uh, one of the things that happened is they brought this big boat whale 
in uh, uh, from Japan to get rid of the oil. And it didn't work because the majority of the oil is spread throughout the water column over thousands of square, uh, uh, square miles uh, in, the, in the Gulf. And so uh, and there's been a lot of work to show that dispersants, uh, which is true, make it more difficult to clean up the mess than if you didn't use them. The sole purpose in the, in the Gulf for dispersants is to keep a cover-up going uh, for BP to try to hide the volume of oil that has been released and save them hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, of fines. That's the purpose of, of using the dispersants, not to protect the public health or environment. Quite the opposite. You've made comparisons between uh, 